Wan Ling, the high school student in the fictional city of Huaxiu, possesses extraordinary magical powers that he tries to keep hidden and appear average among his peers. Even as a child, his power was so immense that he fearlessly confronted and defeated a monstrous giant frog. However, this remarkable feat remains largely unknown to others and the credit is mistakenly given to someone else. On the first day of his new high school year, Wang enters the campus and notices the statue of Zhu Yi, who was renowned as the man who saved Huaxiu. As he makes his way inside, two senior students noticing his low force value, which is a number representing one's prowess in the realm of spiritual abilities, decide to bully him and ask for money. Their bullying, however, is abruptly interrupted by a golden beam of fire. A girl flies down from the sky, declaring that it is unfair to bully a freshman with a low force value, and the girl is none other than Sun Rong, the daughter of the legendary Flower Fruit Water Curtain Group. Everyone admires her, while the seniors, intimidated by her reputation, quickly retreat, claiming that boys shouldn't fight with girls. She approaches Wang and assures him that she will protect him no matter what, and they shake hands. But to everyone's surprise, he hands her the $10 that the bullies demanded from him, leaving everyone very confused, including some girl, as she thought her night rate was higher than that. Later, Zhu appears in a hologram form and asks the students to gather for a spiritual force test to determine their class placement and the students with excellent scores would be placed in class elite, while others would be in the ordinary class. As the test begins, the first student, Xuan, finds himself in a dark room with water on the floor when suddenly, a giant frog appears and the water begins to glow. The students watch the scene unfold on a large display from outside. Some girl recognizes the frog as the one that attacked the city many years ago and was defeated by Master Zhuo. But after learning that girls kiss frogs to find a prince, he apparently decided to come back what a simp. It is revealed by the announcer that the real giant frog is sealed under the campus, and the one they are facing now is merely an incarnation of its spiritual force. The students are instructed to summon their own spiritual force and strike the frog's head, however, many students fail to even touch the barrier. Then, a boy named Chen Chao enters the scene, confidently hitting the frog's barrier with his hand, which glows with fire and is selected for class elite along with Gu Hao, who has an impressive force value of 886. Sun Girl then joins the contest, striking the frog with a force value of 2019, and the crowd hails her as a goddess. As Wang's turn arrives, he catches the frog's attention, which senses his power and recalls their encounter from years ago. The frog contemplates that, if he were to attack, its soul and spirit would be in jeopardy. Wang, in order to maintain his average facade, pretends to struggle, exerting minimal force while feeding maximum effort. Just as he is about to strike, the display screen malfunctions, showing an upside-down image of the frog. To everyone's surprise, Wang's force value is displayed as 99,999 on the screen. The crowd is stunned and Sun Girl realizes that there was no protective membrane around the giant frog this time. He ponders why the frog reacted that way when he hadn't actually struck it and realizes that it was playing dead. He secures his place in class elite and the classroom settles down as Pan, the instructor, begins the first summoning lesson. Pan explains that the space around them is filled with spiritual entities and they must utilize their spiritual force to create a passage in the space and summon a spiritual creature. She further explains that the size and strength of the summoned spiritual entity depend on their force level. The students make their attempts at summoning, with Chen summoning a stick that elicits laughter from the others. Well, I suppose he wanted to branch out with his summoning skills. Meanwhile, Sun Girl successfully summoned a skeletal dog with a cute pink bow tied to its tail and playfully calls it a stray dog. As she observes her creation, she can't help but wonder how much spiritual force is really required to summon a genuine spiritual beast. When it is Wang's turn to summon, a blast occurs in the classroom and he unexpectedly summons the giant frog from the test, triggering panic among the students. The instructor Pan swiftly intervenes, merging Sun Girl's stray dog with the giant frog, resulting in an odd-looking green-colored dog. The students are filled with awe at the new creation and lovingly name it Froggy 2. The next day arrives and as Wang makes his way to school, a flood of memories from his childhood washes over him, reminding him of the reasons why he has always strived to maintain a low profile. He reflects on the extraordinary events that seem to unfold around him, starting from the very moment of his birth itself and recalls the moment when, as an infant, he emerged into the world from his mother's womb unassisted, astonishing his parents with his seemingly innate power. Why hire a midwife when you can superhero your way out of the womb? But his extraordinary abilities didn't stop there and as he grew older, he discovered that his touch alone proved to be a force to be reckoned with, shattering a prized limited edition dragon slaughtering sword that his parents had lovingly bought for him. 
Although he knew that his mother had actually purchased a counterfeit sword to prevent his father from wasting half of his hard-earned money. The extraordinary incidents continued to occur as he grew older, and on one unforgettable birthday, he inadvertently set the entire house ablaze while attempting to blow out the candles atop his cake. Forget nursery rhymes, this guy was busy shattering swords and setting houses ablaze even as a kid. Nevertheless, when his parents witnessed him defeating the giant frog of level 5 at the age of 6, they decided that Wai needed to lead an ordinary and happy life. They provided him with a protective amulet to wear on his back neck and a golden pill to be taken daily in order to suppress his power. Despite these measures, he remained strong and his father promised to create a new amulet that will be more effective in concealing his power. Until then, Wang resolved to attend school and maintain the lowest possible profile, blending in seamlessly with the rest of the students around him. Upon arriving at school, he finds himself amidst a heated election for the position of class chief, with Chen and Sun Girl locked in a fierce competition for the coveted title. Sun Girl, in an attempt to sway voters, offers free items from the store to freshmen who support her candidacy, which leads Chen and Gu to criticize her for cheating. However, she views it as an opportunity to showcase her talents and charm. Nobody accepts the free gifts but Wan, who is driven by his insatiable craving for Sun Girl's mouth-watering noodles, strikes a deal with her, promising to cast five votes in her favor in exchange for five packets of the dried crispy noodles. Upon seeing him accept her gifts, everyone starts to get free items in exchange for their votes. She then skillfully employs her seductive arts, marked by the appearance of magical signs floating above the heads of those who receive her gifts. As the scene unfolds, he bids his farewell to Sun Girl and offers her a golden pill, a spiritual force containment gift bestowed upon him by his mother. He believes that one vote alone does not suffice to repay her generosity of five packets of noodles. Little does he realize the misunderstanding that will follow. In the classroom, the teacher delves into the art of seduction and the use of incantations and hand seals to project spiritual force onto others. The origins of the spell are revealed, tracing back a thousand years to a mysterious figure known as Little Wise Guy, who once commanded a devoted following of over 3,000 disciples. The teacher then proceeds to explain the prerequisites for casting the seduction spell, emphasizing the importance of giving a gift while reciting the incantation, not giving the tiniest part of me to benefit the world. This act creates a spiritual feel that temporarily relaxes the guard of the recipient's minds, allowing the spiritual force to leave a mark and exert control. Wang's suspicions arise as he recalls Sun Girl giving items for free and wonders if she has used this seduction spell on everyone. However, a sudden realization dawns upon him he gave her the golden pill as a return gift, meaning he shouldn't have been affected by the spell. With a quick and subtle gesture, he signals her to consume the pill instead, who, unfortunately, interprets his constant staring as a sign of romantic interest. Poor Sun Girl, thinking she found a new source of power in Wang's golden pill, consumes it, but little did she know, it was more like a spiritual strength drain. This sudden turn of events releases everyone from the grasp of her seduction spell, and Chen emerges triumphant in the election, ascending to the esteemed role of class president. The next day, on his way to the pill refining class, Wang meets Sun Girl, who arrives at the school in a big car with protective bodyguards. She walks on a red carpet with an air of importance, and he notices a magical sign on top of her head, realizing that he had inadvertently used the seduction spell on Sun Girl. He approaches her cautiously, reaching out to gently touch her hair and proceeds to destroy the sign by rubbing it off, which relieves her of its bewildering effect. However, his unexpected actions left both Gu and Chen puzzled, wondering how Wang could behave so rudely to Sun Girl. Inside the classroom, their instructor, Pan, explains the intricate process of creating a vitality pill using the Yangsheng pot and furnace, and the students discreetly size up each other's furnace for the task. Chen proudly brings a copper cauldron that belonged to his great-grandfather and daydreams about Sun Girl admiring him because of his possession of such a treasure heirloom. The instructor then guides the class through the initial steps of furnace preparation, emphasizing that patience is key as the pill's formation would require a substantial duration of seven hours and encourages them to return later to check its progress. The students begin their work enthusiastically, eager to prove themselves to one another. Gu thinks to himself that Chen's family furnace is better suited for large-scale production, while acknowledging the challenges it would have for precise heat control in smaller quantities. Sun Girl, showcasing her privilege, proudly presents a refining machine sourced from her family's esteemed factory. Wang, ever the unconventional one, opted for the humble microwave, bringing a modern twist to pill-making. Meanwhile, Gu, ever the practical one, wielded an antique-style furnace adorned with a built-in temperature control and display, radiating confidence in his pill preparation abilities. However, the tranquility of the classroom was shattered when Chen's cauldron suddenly exploded, unleashing chaos and panic. 
He flees in distress, afraid of what his father might say, and his anguished cries echo through the hallways. Later, Froggy 2 enters the classroom and consumes Goose Furnace to absorb its spiritual energy, so that it can become more powerful. However, Wang, anticipating Froggy 2's actions, returns in time. A game of cat and mouse ensued as Froggy 2, sensing danger from him, leaped out of the window in a desperate attempt to evade his grasp. He quickly catches up to Froggy 2 and forcefully retrieves the furnace, and then goes to the toilet to wash it. However, Gumas understands the situation when he sees Wan coming out of the toilet with his furnace. Fueled by confusion and suspicion, Gu confronts him, aiming a gun, while Wang, in an earnest attempt to explain the truth, found himself caught in a web of misunderstanding. Despite his explanation, Gu does not trust him and pulls the trigger, but accidentally shoots the pentatonic poison from the gun into Chen's mouth as Chen runs towards Wang, causing him to collapse. As Wang desperately tries to save Chen, Gu remains oblivious and asks for Wang's help in preparing the antidote to cure Chen and keep the situation a secret. In exchange, he promises to forgive Wang for taking his furnace. They carefully carry Chen to the classroom and armed with a level 3 textbook, they begin preparing the antidote, knowing it will require at least a four-hour wait. While they wait, Froggy 2, ever mischievous, attempts to snack on the furnace once again. Reacting quickly, Gu uses a flash that causes Froggy 2 to emit spiritual energy, turning it into an impromptu preheater. He checks the furnace and realizes that Froggy 2's spiritual energy has unintentionally preheated it. Seeing this as a stroke of luck, they decide to use Froggy 2's spiritual energy to their advantage, directing it onto the furnace to expedite the process. Just as they finish, they hear the sound of the class returning, signaling their imminent discovery. Wang springs into action, hastily attempting to cover up the scene, while Gu frantically tries to stall the incoming students. Despite Gu's efforts, Instructor Pan and the rest of the students enter the class. To Gu's surprise, everything appears normal and he realizes that Wang successfully covered up the scene quickly. Instructor Pan comes to check Gu's furnace and retrieves a golden pill, giving him a remarkable score of 85. However, when the instructor comes to check Wang's pill in the microwave, she finds it broken and charred, resembling an explosive. Pan proceeds to scold him for doing a poor job, leading Gu to suspect that Wang gave his own pill to Gu and took Chen's pill for himself. Inwardly, he made a solemn vow to become Wang's best friend, ignorant of the fact that his own pill had remained safely tucked within the furnace throughout their trials, while Wang's microwave had obviously failed in its task of pill creation. After class, they take Chen out of his cauldron, and it turns out that, in a rush to hide Chen, Wang threw him into his own broken cauldron. Later, Chen wakes up on the ground and asks about his cauldron. Gou replies that they managed to fix it. He then hugs Wang, apologizes for thinking badly about him, and breaks down in tears. In the classroom, some girl approaches Wang, asking him on a date and leaving him speechless. Just then, he notices two assassins wearing rabbit masks on a nearby roof, aiming a sniper rifle at Sun Girl. Acting swiftly, he uses his powers to redirect the bullet, saving Sun Girl's life. Unaware of the danger she was in, she continues to plead with Wang to go on a date with her. Seeing her choose Wang over him, Chen becomes upset and starts to cry and Gu comforts him. Just then, the administrator enters the classroom and asks for Wang, who acknowledges the instructor and goes with him. Sun Girl mistakenly believes that Wang said yes to her and rumors of a love story between them girls start circulating on the official Faction 60 page. The instructor introduces Wang to the joint honorary master immortal of the school Li, Master Zhu Yi, and leaves them to discuss. Immediately, Zhu recognizes him as the boy who defeated the giant frog and addresses him with respect as master, and asks Wang to take him as a disciple. However, he uses his power of erasing memories on Master Zhu, a technique that makes targets lose memory of designated events and potentially fall into a vegetative state. To ensure Zhu's safety, he reduces the power of the technique by half and then leaves the room. He then goes to a quiet place to eat his dry, crispy noodles, but is joined by Froggy 2 who informs him of the assassins. The next day, Wang experiences nightmares about Sun Girl while he sleeps and abruptly wakes up in his room and notices her and her security guards waiting for him on the road through the open window. Startled, he quickly closes the curtain and heads downstairs to have breakfast. To his horror, his parents are thrilled about the prospect of him dating Sun Girl, and they urge him to eat quickly and not keep her waiting for long. His parents even argue about his newfound dating life while he purposely tries to delay by checking his social media. His parents proudly show him the high-end nutrition pills that Sun Girl gave them, claiming it can enhance a person's beauty. Wang's father becomes excited about his son's new relationship and begins offering him tips and advice. He is then forced out of his house by his parents for him to go on a date with her. 
Reluctantly, he gets into Sun Girl's car and secretly wishes that the assassins mentioned earlier by Froggy 2 would show up now. She informs him that they are heading to a fun park called Heavenly Paradise, which happens to be her family's real estate project that combines commerce and recreation and mentions that her grandfather built it exclusively for her. Trying to tease Wong, she playfully tells him that she hasn't seen the place before, as she had planned to bring the love of her life there for the first time, before bursting into laughter, admitting it was just a joke. Inside the fun park, they visit the Cave of the Universe, where a guide explains that the stone wall inside the cave is a prophecy wall. It is said that if they put their hands in the fairy's mouth, the wall will prophesize their relationship's future with an echo. Sun Girl, believing in the legend, convinces him to try it. However, just as they approach the fairy's mouth, he notices the two assassins who have been following them into heavenly paradise. The assassins quickly draw their guns and fire, but Wang manages to catch the bullet in his mouth and she, misunderstanding Wang's reaction, thinks he is smiling at her and blushes. In order to protect her and prevent any harm, he uses his powers to stop the assassins. He then employs his ability to erase memories using his 50% forgetting trick to remove this incident from both Sun Girl's and the guide's minds. Wang and Sun Girl continue their date, enjoying various rides and games, with Wang ensuring their safety by thwarting any further attempts by the assassins. He also uses his forgetting trick whenever necessary to erase these incidents from their memory. Later, at sunset, she asks him if they can ride the Ferris wheel together and watch the fireworks. Wang agrees, thinking that he might find a moment of tranquility on the Ferris wheel, but was proven wrong. They both climb onto the seat and sit facing each other, however, the assassins follow them inside the Ferris wheel as it takes off. While they enjoy the beautiful spectacle, the assassins suddenly confront them, brandishing guns. Sun Girl suspects that the assassins are from the Shadow Faction and positions herself between the assassins and Wang, determined to protect him. Seeing this, Wang becomes furious, his eyes glowing a bright red color. He uses his eyes to disable the guns and phones of the assassins, incapacitating them, and swiftly kicks them out of the Ferris wheel cabin. Wang then asks Sun Girl to keep everything that happened a secret and requests a promise. For the first time in his life, he uses his 100% trick of promise, sealing all memories of today's events in Sun Girl's mind forever as a secret. The following day at school, the atmosphere is tense as Gu and Chen eagerly ask Wang about his date with Sun Girl. Sun Girl herself arrives in her grand car, accompanied by her vigilant bodyguards, and joins the conversation. Her bodyguards form a protective circle around them as the school's administrator informs them about the ongoing threat from the assassins who tried to attack her at Heavenly Paradise. Zhou arrives and begins discussing the special security measures in place for the day, claiming that he was the one who thwarted the assassins yesterday. Chen enthusiastically cheers for Zhu's bravery, however, in reality, it was Wang who stopped the assassins and used his 50% forgetting trick on Zhu the previous night. This ensured that Zhu would remember himself as the hero who stopped the attackers, allowing Wang to maintain a low profile at school. Zhu informs everyone that a kill order from the Shadow Faction has been issued for Sun Girl, indicating that anyone targeted by the order won't survive the following day. He explains the heightened security measures implemented to protect Sun Girl, such as stationed soldiers at the gate and various levels of security within the building, including bodyguards of the Golden Pill Phase and above throughout the school. Zhu instructs everyone to gather in his office, which is equipped with a powerful protective force field. Additionally, he mentions that the Seven Star Squad will patrol the area on their magical flying swords to prevent distant sniper or aerial attacks. They gather in the office and Zuo reassures them that they will be safe here. Shen becomes excited when he spots the Seven Star Squad patrolling the school campus from the window, and the administrator acknowledges that this is the highest level of protection ever implemented since the establishment of the school. Suddenly, Zhuo and the administrator notice Exu Feng, the third member of the Hammer Team and a late Golden Pill Phase Red Ribbon from the Shadow Faction attacking the guards with his Chicken Hammer as he proceeds. Chu Feng then strikes the camera with his Chicken Hammer, causing the screen to malfunction and resulting in Zhuo and the administrator losing their camera connection. The students pay no attention to this as they are preoccupied with chatting in the elite class group about the events that unfolded at Heavenly Paradise during Sun Girl and Wang's date yesterday. Zhu speaks on his phone and requests a reduction in the number of armed cruisers at the gate, while increasing the guards at the central lobby of the school. Another assassin, Xiu Ying, the second member of the Hammer Team and a late Golden Pill Phase Red Ribbon from the Shadow Faction, known for his expertise in toxins, incapacitates the elite guards with a toxic gas. However, the administrator confronts Ex Xu Ying and engages him in a fight. The students, including Zhuo, watch the battle unfold on a screen from inside the office. Meanwhile, Wang finds himself craving crispy noodles and places an order from his mobile and patiently waits for the delivery to arrive. The fight between Xu Ying and the administrator continues, 
with the administrator successfully avoiding Su Ying's traps. Just as Su Ying tries to make his escape and sprint towards the office, Wang surprises him by simply opening the door and knocking him out. He immediately apologizes and goes to pick up his food delivery. Zhu reassures Sun Girl that Wang will be alright, emphasizing that the assassins are after her specifically. On his way, he encounters Su Jian, the leader of the Hammer Team, an elite golden pill phase red ribbon king known for his power of invisibility and wielding a massive hammer of immense strength. Su Jian, concealed in invisibility, prepares to engage in battle and shatter the powerful protective spiritual field once he gathers enough power in his hammer. However, he is taken aback when Wang passes by him and acknowledges his presence. As the delivery arrives, the Seven Star Squad inspects it for any harmful items before handing it over to Wang. Tu Jian assumes that Wang was referring to the delivery and that he didn't actually see him. Wang, realizing the misunderstanding, apologizes to Xu Jian for accidentally knocking out his friend. Tu Jian is taken aback that Wang can see him and becomes furious. He swings his fully charged hammer at Wang, but it lands on him like an egg on a rock, leaving Wang completely unscathed. Meanwhile, Wang continues to eat his crispy noodles casually. Xu Jian is terrified and wonders how Wang has this much spiritual energy despite him being in the primary phase. Wang then pulls Zhu Jian outside, who has collapsed on the ground. Zhu emerges to congratulate him and addresses him as master. Wang once again utilizes his 50% forgetting trick on Zhu, making him believe that he was the one who defeated Xu Jian. He then hands Xu Jian over to Zhu and pretends to be injured from the attack by the assassins. The assassins are then apprehended by the police, and everyone gathers around Zhu to praise him for his bravery. They notice Wang in Zhu's arms, appearing to be injured. Wang pretends to be sick after the attacks by the assassins at school and takes sick leave, remaining at home for 10 days. His mother shouts at him, urging him to stop pretending and inform the school the following day that he has recovered, insisting that he should return to school the day after tomorrow. He reflects on that day and remembers how concerned Sun Girl was, knowing nothing about what really happened. As a low-profile hero, he feels it's necessary to give credit to Zhu as the one who eliminated the assassins. He lies in his private healing cabin, which Sun Girl summoned the best medical experts to construct, providing him with an immersive healing experience. He contemplates his tragic fate while in the cabin, and it automatically showers him with valuable medicines every hour, which are said to connect his meridians and enhance his vitality. His mother brings breakfast and asks him to come out of the cabin and eat. Just then, Mr. Wang shouts from downstairs that his friends have come to see him. Poor Wang becomes terrified and quickly runs back to the cabin, pretending to be sick, while his mother greets his friends. Upon seeing his friends with flowers and gifts, Wang's mother kindly tells them it was not necessary and goes downstairs to prepare snacks. Go teases Wang for still being sick and introduces his pet bird, Birdie 2, which perches on Wang's healing cabin and repeatedly says, Camel, Camel, Camel. Everyone laughs except for Wang, who silently curses the bird and wonders why would his friend want such an ugly pet. Chen then jokingly remarks that there is a resemblance between Wang and Birdie too, causing him to make a funny face. Sun Girl suddenly remembers that they left Froggy 2 at the door, but Froggy 2 joins Wang's mother when she returns to the room with snacks for everyone. Froggy 2 goes next to Wang and licks his face. His mother thanks them for taking care of him at school, and Sun Girl sees this as an opportunity to build a relationship with her future mother-in-law. She gives Mrs. Wang ultimate elixirs, her family's products that will aid in Wang's recovery, along with some nutrition pills that she had given to Mrs. Wang previously. She also presents an injection containing chicken blood tonic for Wang's full recovery. Wang's mother then leaves, taking the gifts with her and warning him to treat his friends, especially Sun Girl, well. Sun Girl pushes Froggy 2 away and sits down next to him. She asks him if he's feeling better and expresses her worry for him. Then she takes out the chicken blood tonic injection and tells him that, combined with spiritual power, it is said to work miracles for Ling's recovery. The spiritual power infusion involves transferring spiritual power from one cultivator to another to aid in healing the injured. Upon hearing this, Wang becomes scared. Just then, Chen informs him that the administrator gave wristbands to test every student, and that Chen was given Wang's wristband to give it to him during their visit. She becomes very angry at this and argues that the spiritual test will require a lot of energy and he does not have to take the test if he is not feeling very well. A creeped out Wang doesn't want to be injected, let alone combine their spiritual power. To avoid her and her chicken blood tonic, he runs to Chen and grabs the wristband for him, announcing that he has recovered and can therefore test his spiritual powers using the band. They proceed to take their annual spiritual power test, starting with Chen. He demonstrates that one should concentrate all their spiritual force into a sphere, so the wristband can measure the spiritual force. Then they let it burst, which measures the diameter of the spiritual force and provides the results. 
This test differs from the entrance test as it can show how one's spiritual power can take on any shape. Ken's force power value corresponds to a value of around 600 and Ghoul remarks that this value is not much different from the entrance test. He then explains that this represents force outside the body, achieved by concentrating one's spiritual power and visualizing it externally. It requires persistent training and signifies the ability to manifest spiritual power in any shape, making one a true cultivator. Who then takes his turn and his spiritual power value only reaches 176, leaving him feeling ashamed. He attempts to jump out of Wang's window in embarrassment, but Chen quickly intervenes, pulling Gu away from the window and urging him to calm down. Sun Girl then suggests that she should probably skip the test to avoid causing any damage. However, Gu and Chen point out that despite coming from a prestigious family, she only scored 2019 in the entrance test, so her sphere shouldn't be that big and therefore would not cause much damage. Sun Girl reluctantly agrees and takes the test. To their surprise, the room nearly explodes from the immense power of Sun Girl's sphere, and she scores a remarkable 4015, placing second only to Tang Jing's from the Faction 59 school. Gu and Shen are left dumbstruck by the size of her sphere. Now it's Wang's turn to take the test. As he wears the wristband, he considers leaking his spiritual force to score low on the test. Sun Girl takes out the blood tonic injection again and asks if he's feeling better. He quickly replies that he is perfectly alright and doesn't mind taking the test. Initially, he creates a small sphere, thinking it will suffice. However, everyone in the room is literally struggling to stay grounded as his minuscule amount of spiritual energy is enough to blow them away. Who knew that Wang's secret power was being a one-man hurricane? He quickly redirects his spiritual force to outer space, creating a gigantic spiritual force sphere, the size of a planet. Everyone wonders where his original sphere went, and he receives a score of null, surpassing the student from Faction 59. This leaves everyone confused and shocked, wondering if null means zero. Sun Girl explains that this occurred because he was still sick and hadn't fully recovered. Wang suggests that it might be a display error, and Chen and Gu laugh it off before going home. Later, he calls Gu for help hacking into the system to alter his score to 175. Go agrees to assist and starts hacking, while he enjoys his crispy noodles. Go explains that he needs the login password to hack into the school league system and plans to find it using his password grabbing formation. Surprisingly, the password turns out to be just eight asterisk symbols. Gu spots Tang Jing's name in second place and replaces it with the name Birdie2, finding it amusing. However, as Gu tampers with the system's coding, an alarm is triggered, and he quickly quits before he can change Wang's score, leaving him disappointed. The next day, Wang is having lunch with his close friend engrossed in a casual conversation. In the background, the TV screen broadcasts the training session of Faction 59 students, capturing their attention. The news channel announces the National Senior Phase Sword Competition and showcases the training field of the Faction 59 school. The reporter emphasizes that the students' abilities are on par with professional standards and highlights Tang Jing's performance of the Big Dipper sword formation. The reporter interviews Tang, asking him about the preparations he has made to win against the rival, Faction 60. He confidently mentions that his teammates have undergone rigorous training for a month. As the interview continues, the reporter asks Tang if he has any message for Faction 60. This catches Wang's friend's attention, and they focus on the screen, while Wang casually continues to eat his crispy noodles. Tang acknowledges Sun Girl's immense power and expresses his eagerness to witness her remarkable abilities at the sword competition. However, when questioned about Wang who scored null, his frustration becomes apparent. He sarcastically wishes Wang the best in his immortal practice before abruptly concluding the interview. Later that night, Wang and his friends find themselves at home, unwinding after a long day. Suddenly, they receive an unexpected invitation to a chatting group from the administrator, which surprises them all. The administrator reveals that the five of them are participants in the 4,396th National Senior Phase Sword Competition. Shockingly, they discover that even Froggy 2, their loyal canine companion, has been included. It turns out that Froggy 2 took the spiritual force test and scored an impressive 5,000, surpassing even Tang and earning the right to participate. The group is astonished, discovering that there is a precedent for animals participating in the competition. Excitement fills the air as they contemplate the upcoming competition. Chen shares the news with his father, who expresses overwhelming pride and presents him with a special spiritual sword named Lai Chao. Gu then eagerly shares details about his own cherished sword, which he has possessed for nearly eight years. The blade was forged using the teeth of a formidable level three spiritual beast, known as the Night Devil Tiger. Sun Girl joins the conversation through a video call and showcases her spiritual sword, Ocean. The administrator is immediately shocked by the sword's blue color, 
and informs them that Sun Girl has produced a sword spirit. Instructor Pan, observing the sword's radiant glow, praises Sun Girl, acknowledging that despite her family's advantages, she has invested time and effort to foster a genuine connection with her sword. Sun Girl then astounds everyone by revealing that her family has forged 13 more swords similar to Ocean, just in case one breaks, leaving the group in awe. The administrator then explains the process of producing a spiritual sword spirit and emphasizes the importance of patience. Initially, the body of a sword spirit is in a chaotic state, but with dedicated effort, it solidifies. The initial form of a sword spirit can manifest as a small beast or as a human, which evolves and upgrades over time, gradually developing intelligence. Some sword spirits possessed by exceptional cultivators even have the ability to think. The administrator assures them that they will learn more about this in higher level classes and encourages them to cultivate a strong bond with their spiritual swords. As the conversation progresses, Froggy 2 becomes the center of attention, and the group playfully teases him wondering how a dog could possess a spiritual sword. However, to their astonishment, Froggy 2 surprises them all by sending a video of himself pulling out a spiritual sword called Sword of Sky from inside his body with the help of his tongue. They say the pen is mightier than the sword, but Froggy 2 proves that the tongue can wield a spiritual sword just fine. Everyone is left dumbfounded by this unexpected display of power from their canine friend. With all eyes now on Wang, curiosity gets the better of his friends as they eagerly inquire if he too possesses a spiritual sword. All Wang wants to do is eat his crispy noodles in peace, but alas, fate has other plans. After enduring constant pestering from his friends, he finally confirms that he does have a spiritual sword and ends the conversation. No one seems to notice that he didn't want to take part in the competition. He is concerned that if he shows his true power at the competition, it would cause a lot of problems. However, his friend and his instructor take the competition very seriously, leaving him with no option but to say that he indeed has a spiritual sword. He goes downstairs to ask his parents about his sword, but overhears his mother arguing with his father about a discounted anti-aging cream. He sees that the TV is on and the news is reporting an explosion at a spiritual force chemical plant. Experts are warning against bringing any magic wear of high spiritual force density in your spiritual figures. Later, in the breaking news, the Cultivation Council's armored cruise troop surrounds the Shadow Faction's headquarters, marking it the first time the lair of the Shadow Faction has been discovered. A member of the Shadow Faction with a rabbit face cover challenges anyone who wants to enter the headquarters to go through her first. However, she is apprehended by the armored cruise troop. The Magic Squad then arrives and captures the rest of the Shadow Faction quickly. Master Zhu arrives in his car and the press immediately surrounds him. He addresses the press, stating that in the past, he foiled the assassin's plans two times and that this time it won't be any different. He also mentions that he is looking forward to meeting the leader of the Shadow Faction. Wang then takes his attention away from the TV and asks his parents the whereabouts of his spiritual sword. He then goes to the attic in search of his sword and finally finds the box containing it, which is glowing in Wang's presence. From inside the box, a small boy with white hair appears, exclaiming that it has been 10 years. Startled, Wang quickly closes the box and feels a sharp pain from his amulet. The next day, Wang gathers with his friends outside the school gate. Chen and Guo make fun of his wooden sword, saying that it is too small and only suitable for children. Sun Girl, however, finds it cute and Froggy too is the only one who realizes the immense power of Wang's sword. The administrator, Zhu, and instructor Pan arrive and inform the group that the competition will take place in Faction 59 for five days, requiring them to stay there. Upon seeing that Wang has brought no luggage, the administrator asks him if he knew they would be staying at Faction 59. Wang actually knew about this, but still didn't bring any luggage because he didn't intend to participate in the competition. He thought that after they arrived there, he would pretend to have a stomach ache and return home. Chen offers to share his clothes, but everyone becomes disgusted by this suggestion. Everyone except Zhu boards the bus as he has some emergency he has to take care of, Zhu wishes Wang good luck before Wang closes his window in annoyance. Inside the bus, Wang's sword spirit tries to emerge, but he suppresses it and reminds it of their agreement from the previous day. He had given the sword spirit crispy noodles in exchange for remaining silent. Who knew the key to a powerful spirit was a tasty snack? The bus then arrives at the gate of Faction 59, where they are welcomed by Tang Zing's three other students and their instructor, Sti. Pan and Si glare at each other, revealing that they used to be close friends and roommates, but are now rivals. They constantly insult and mock each other. Si approaches Sun Girl and implies that she is the one helping improve Faction 60's financial situation. Pan reminds Si that Sun Girl enrolled at her school, not hers. 
Pan then approaches a boy near Tang and accuses him of cheating in examinations, bullying schoolmates, and abusing animals, resulting in a public security penalty. Si feels as if she has been hit by a bulldozer. Meanwhile, Wang feels anxious and struggles to find an opportunity to feign his stomachache. To get back at Pan, Si goes to Wang and uses her grand testing trick on him. A ray of spiritual force passes through him, and he contemplates if he could use this to his advantage and escape from the competition. She then mocks Pan for bringing the student with a spiritual force value of 5 to such a prestigious competition and asks Pan if she is ready to accept her defeat. Wang seizes this opportunity and pretends to collapse on the ground while clutching his chest. Everyone from Faction 60 gathers around him to check if he is alright. Unexpectedly, his sword spirit emerges and tells Wang that his amulet is breaking. As he realizes this, he asks the sword spirit why it didn't tell him earlier, to which it replies that it tried to inform him about it on the bus, but Wang kept shoving it back inside. The amulet then shatters, releasing an unimaginable amount of spiritual force into the sky. Everyone is terrified and suspects Si of doing something to harm him. She, however, denies any involvement and accuses him of acting. This angers Sun and she shouts at Si to have a look at Wang and questions how she can call it acting when he is in such a critical condition. Si then explains that she simply performed a simple spiritual testing trick on him to check his force value and asks the other students of Faction 59 if they did anything, and they all refuse. Sun Burl holds Wang in concern and he continues to pretend to be in distress. Make sure to like and comment for part 2 of this series.